Hi, and welcome to another video on the building of the Vosterian 108th Army. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at building a tank commander. But not just any tank commander, we're going to look at building this tank commander. Now, this tank commander has the internal sponsons, similar to a Malkador, but it also has the extended engine compartment and tank rails as well. So, we already talked about in one of the earlier videos the extended engine compartment and tank rails, but today we're going to look at the whole build. I'm just going to take you through what I've got here in front of me. So, we've got our battle tank here, plastic kit. This is one of the newest versions, so it's got the small turret hole that you can see here. Um, I have got a tank accessory sprue. I've got a couple of Forge World turrets that I'm going to be using for this because I really love the Forge World turrets. The original turrets are cool, but these just take it to the next level. I have got the extended tank engine compartment and trench rails and I've got this kit which is a beyond the tabletop internal sponsons kit so for these tanks it takes a bit of work to do there's an amazing tutorial which will be in the description from this video that beyond the tabletop have done but I'm just gonna crack through it and see how I get on with it today we're gonna check back shortly and see how we get on if you like these videos please you know like like uh, the video subscribe to the page. You can also check out my Instagram, fosteron underscore 108th, and that's our Instagram. If you want to send me any pictures of anything you do as well, any of your conversions, any of your guard or other army stuff, do, and I'll try and throw a couple of them into one of the videos as they come along. See how we go on. So, with these sponsons here, what we're going to do is we're going to adapt the uh, track sections. Now, I haven't glued these together yet. These are still separate. You uh, create a hole in both sections for these kits here. And the kit itself comes in three parts. You've got the, uh, the body of the sponson here, which is marked helpfully right and left. You've got a top as well, which sits on the top. That would be this one. It sits on the top. Sponson fits in the middle just there. And then you also got a uh, plate that fits on the outside like this. That goes on the outside of the track section. So we're just going to get these cleaned up. We're going to get these holes cut. The Beyond the Tabletop guys do a brilliant job of really nicely measuring and scoring using the back of a knife to cut rather than the front because it removes the plastic as you go. It's a really lovely video. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use some tools and just try and cut it because I have two kids and a full-time job and I really don't have time for the lovely approach as much as I'd love to. So I'm going to see how it goes with just cutting. Cool. What we also need to make sure we have as part of the kit is these pieces, these are the Sponson internals. You still have to use those from the uh, original sprue. So we'll just get those cut out and ready. And I'm not going to magnetise these, I'm going to just stick with one loadout. Uh, but also you can magnetise these so you can swap your, swap your Sponson guns as well, which is a lovely, lovely thing to do. This is our first track sponsor internal sponsor done. Uh, as you can see on the inside here, it's a nice messy cut, we're not going to see that so it's alright. The internal sponsor actually sits inside where the hull's going to be, but that doesn't matter because the Lehman Ross hull is hollow. And then yeah, this spins as it should do. So yeah, I'm going to just crack on and we'll do the second one. I'm looking forward to seeing how these come out. Thanks.
So, there we go. That's our internal sponsons done. That was a little bit of work. That probably took 45 minutes, if that. Um, it would have taken a bit longer if I'd done it by hand, but it would have been a whole lot neater. I'm just going to put the rest of the tank together now, start putting it all together, see how it looks. Um, and then we'll look at the other parts of the, the build. Okay, so we have our Lehman Russ hull here, all built. Uh, we just put a couple of extra little bits on. Sponsons, internal sponsons are in. Uh, we've put on the little towing eyes at the front. We've put on the front sponson. And we're just going to pop on this extended engine compartment. Now that sits on the back here. All it does is it fits right on. This is a Cromlech part. Now I'm not, this hasn't been paid for or anything, it's not an ad. All of these parts I've just bought myself uh, to help demonstrate this and make this model look cool because I love this. So anyway, this is a Cromlech engine extension and then it has these little trench rails that sit in as well. So we're just going to get this all put together, make sure everything fits. The trench rails just sit in these little holes here at the back so they all fit in nicely, just there like that. And then we'll get it all super glued together. The engine compartment sits over the wheels on the back here, the wheels on the back of the treads. Let's just get him in there. It popped in. He's just going to go in there and hopefully that will stick beautifully. And whilst we're here holding this thing in place, we'll get these trench rails put on too. So pop a little bit of glue in. And then these will just slot into the places here. Slot into their little rail inserts. And then we can just hold it all in place for a minute until that's all nice and fixed. And that is the extended engine compartment on there. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to give everything a nice spray coat before I start adding accessories and stuff. I think I'm just going to get this model itself uh, base coated and then we're going to add some more accessories too in the next few minutes. Okay, so uh, carrying on with the video, what we've done is we've finished putting our internal sponsons in. They, are, uh, they look really great. We've painted the whole tank black. We've got the engine compartment on the back now uh, around here. Internal sponsons are all ready to go, they still move freely, which is awesome. And so we're just going to start cutting out our track sections. So I haven't fitted the track sections to make the whole thing easier to paint. This is, uh, track sections can be fiddly to paint. Uh, so I've just given them a coat of black, I'm going to cut them out, give them a coat of lead belcher on top of that, and then that will give us a really nice colour. We can just add the tracks. Whilst this is all drying, I'll give the first couple of coats on here to paint it. And then uh, it should make the whole process far easier. It's a really nice uh, way to put everything in stages so you're not having to try and touch in around the edges of the tracks with your paintbrushes. So I'll start cutting these out, then I'll go give them a nice coat of spray. Okay, so we have our uh, 
coats of Ulthor and Grey on, what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we're going to just apply our lead belcher to all of the metallic silver parts and we're going to do some browns on all of the uh, all of the stowage and the coiled, uh, coiled blankets and leather and stuff and then we're going to the last thing we'll do colour wise once we've done that is we're just going to add some highlights, some reds uh, and greens in our regiment colours down the side and then I think we're going to call that a day and see how it looks, get the tank commander in and see how it comes out. So what we're going to do for this next part of the video is we're just going to finish putting the tank together. There's a couple more little bits of paint I want to do, but I'm going to get the tracks on so we can also start looking at possibly washing it down as well. We're just going to get the last these bits on here. Now, these track parts on these later uh, Luminous models, they all correspond in the track sections. They tell you which part goes where. It's really helpful. So all you've got to do is find the right part with little numbers underneath on here. This one says L3. I look on the tank and underneath here, it's got written down the bottom L3. 
and that just goes in and sits in place very easily like that. So I'll get all this put together and then we'll see how it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a couple of little washes. So I'm going to take, first of all, for the lead belch parts, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of Nuln oil for anything lead belcher. So that is the, uh, the weapons that we've got. And we're going to add a tiny bit to the weapons themselves just to give them a nice bit of colour. And then we're also going to add the Nuln, add the Nuln oil to the tracks as well. You know, just give that a nice little wash of this. That's just going to dirty these up really well. The last step that I'm going to do, this step I've not tried it before, but I'm really keen to give it a go. I've not varnished this model. So I really want to one day try doing a proper oil pin wash. What I am going to do is I'm going to do a very watered down earth shade across the whole model. So about four to one. So thanks for watching this video on building the tank commander. Just the things we did to finish the model after the last uh, last clip is we added our tank commander in here. The tank commander is a Foster and Laz Cannon spotter that we have cut down and uh, fitted into the turret with a bit of green stuff underneath just to hold him in place and lift him up and then glued in. He's got these great goggles that he looks through because uh, he's a spotter but he works really well uh, we added a respirator from the Cadian um, command sprue, I think it was. And then what we've done as well is all around the tracks, the dozer blade, bits over the hull, we've added some stone and battle mire uh, texture. Once that was completely dry, and you can see it along the bottom of the, uh, the track sections down here, once that was completely dry, we added uh, a very light dry brush of white scar over the top of that. So all of that battle mire has a very light white dry brush over the top, which gives it a real three dimensions, makes it look more realistic. Um, that's it, that's what we did. There's more we could do to it, we could varnish it and we could rust it and weather it in certain ways. But from a tabletop standpoint of view, I'm really happy with that and I think this is really gonna stand out in the army. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed it. Check out some of the other videos and I hope you can watch some more again soon. Thanks very much.